Hello and welcome to South County Spotlight on Frontier Community Access Television. As always, I'm your host, Chris Collins. We are back in studio taking a break from politics, although there's plenty of politics going around the South County. We'll get to all of that in future editions of the show. We're going to take a break from that, though, and talk about a very important event coming up in October, the 30th Annual Crop Walk. And here to talk about it is one of the organizers and a guy who I've known for years, literally since high school, Steve mm -hmm. Damon is the founder of a natural music school in Gill. Now, now the natural music school actually gave a nice concert in Waitley, which we were able to, to capture, and you can watch that on our YouTube channel, FCAT Media. Um, very talented bunch of kids you have there, absolutely. Actually, adults. And adults, that too. That was the yeah. adult group that was down in Waitley. Oh, that's right, that's right. That was the adult, but you have, but you have a, a variety of people that you work with. Oh, from prenatal to, <laughs> to death, you know, what we, we teach to, to anybody. Now, Steve and I got to know each other in the band at Greenfield High School, where we both went to school. So um, you've been in, involved with music for a long time. You also work with some of the elementary schools, right, in the area? I teach at Guilford Central School up in Vermont. And more locally, I have been teaching at Waitley Elementary School. This is my third year in, in Waitley. That's a great uh, school. Now, what do you do in Waitley specifically? I am the general music teacher. So I am the one who takes all the K through six kids and make them dance and sing and play instruments and make music. It's, it's really important, I think, to get kids at a young age and interested in music. And I think that the younger you start, I, mean, I started when I was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I was a little bit later, but there are kids that start, like you said, in, in prenatal or in first, second grade. And the earlier you get them, the more likely they are to hang on to it, right? First grade this afternoon, we were reading music off the board and they didn't know what they were doing. They were just kind of playing instruments. Mm -hmm. And I said, you've done it. <laughs> you've read music. <laughs> They all kind of looked at me and went, really? I said, yes, you have. <laughs> now, it's the have, beginning. Do you have a band or a chorus in, in Waitley, or is it just... Uh... Uh, in Waitley, we have Megan Carr, who does the band and instruments, and then a new young woman by the name of Mary Jo Max Cheryl uh, is the new string teacher in Union 38. And her husband is the band director at Frontier, so you've probably run into Max. Uh, yes, Max, yes. We, yeah. we dealt with, we helped with Max in, on the uh, telethon. Oh, yes. Max is great, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a great program. I mean, I, <clears throat> I hear him at the, the, mostly at the, the football games, and it's, it's just a really, good, a really good program, a lot of good kids. And it's, it's a great way to give kids who may not necessarily be athletes or involved in other extracurriculars an outlet, a creative outlet. It's a whole, whole new intelligence that we haven't, We've just started hooking into. Absolutely. Right, let's talk about the crop walk. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know a lot about this until I started researching it. I just assumed it was a fundraiser to raise money for local, local farms or to lo ah. local agriculture. I didn't realize that it, it began in 1947. You guys have been doing this. This is your 30th year doing this. At least in, the, in Franklin in County, Franklin this County. is our 30th. And it began as part of like a Christian rural overseas program, and the, and the mission was to try and help Midwest farm families share grain with hungry neighbors in post World War II Europe and Asia. Now, how has it changed since then? Well, to begin with, you almost got the acronym of CROP in there, the Christian... <laughs> right. Christian Rural Overseas Program. Program. That's the P of right. CROP Walk. Uh, not many people know that, but when you emailed me, I did my research too. <laughs> uh, the CROP Walk now is run pretty much through church rule service, as it was back then. This is a walkathon, mostly held by churches, but any organization that wants to be involved, mostly churches, but Kiwanis, Hawaiians, whoever wants to. Uh, I hear rumors that there might be a Frontier Regional High School yeah. group walking with us this year. Uh, what we do is, we are one, only one of two crop walks that actually does this. Most crop walks, except for the two of us, uh, they set one church, and that church is in charge. The St. James Church of Idaho, whatever you want to call it, that's the home base of the crop walk. We actually travel around Franklin County. So our biggest fun is trying to find a host to take on the crop walk. Uh, we'll get to that later on, but pretty much the big change is we feed the hungry. Uh, we feed the worldwide hungry and we feed the Franklin County hungry. All the funds that come into the crop walk of Franklin County goes to hungry people. 75% of it goes around the world 
and 25% of it comes right back to Franklin County, Hungary. Is it in the form of a donation to like the Food Bank of Western Mass or is it some other way? You've got one of the five. We have five <laughs> different agencies that we, we uh, contribute to. I can never name all five. I can only do four at a time. So that's my cheat sheet. Okay, that's so great. yes, the Food Bank, uh, we donate to the Food Bank. Uh, so it's 25% that comes back. Each of these five receives 5% of, of the gross. So the food bank receives money, the survival center, the West County community meals at uh, Trinity Church in yeah. Shelburne Falls, the food pantry of the Hill Towns, it's in St. John's yeah. Church I'm in Ashfield, yeah. and then the community meals, which are held I think in, in St. Right? James St. Church. St. James Church, okay. Right. So Which, yeah, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of organizations that uh, you're helping out there. How much, how much can you raise from this thing, do you think? Well, we, whatever we raise from year to year is what we're happy with. They want us to set a goal. I have a goal, but really, whatever we can bring in, we feed the hungry. Uh, we, <laughs> we set a goal of $30,000 last year. And as of the crop walk money having come in, we we're at 29,600 or something like wow. that. And I announced that to one of the churches and the minister says, that's it, we're, we're hitting 30,000. I went, no, 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 next year is the 30th. We'll, we'll do the 30,000 next year. And I don't know how, but the money kept trickling in. So by the time February came, we'd hit the goal of $30,000 last year. That's fantastic. So, well, you do the math, $30,000, 25% of that is 7,500. So we have 7,500 coming back to Franklin County to then, to then dole out to those five organizations. That's great. And you know, the, with, with the economy just coming back around, I mean, it, things are getting better, but there's still a lot of hunger out there. There's a lot of needs still out there. And with the recession and the politics as they have been for the last few years, uh, the, the funds have been lower. And we had gotten down to, oh, it doesn't matter what we've gotten down to, we're growing. Uh, we had gotten down to lower numbers, and we've been on a steady increase. There were years where we hit forty thousand dollars, and we all did the big happy dance. But wow. you know, different years are different incomes. That's amazing. And, and the organizations that get the donations can can spend them any way they choose, as long as they're on hunger programs. It, it's it's those are the hunger programs right. of of Franklin County. Uh, the food bank is amazing. How they can pull this off? I think the last number I heard was. For every dollar that you donate, they can turn it into thirteen dollars worth of food. Yep, exactly. You know, it, it, it's amazing what they can do down there. Now, in the course of the interview, you're going to see some some clips of Steve at the recent crop walk organizational meeting you guys had. Mm -hmm. Is it tough to get people organized and get behind this thing? No, uh, which I say happily. No, it's not. Uh, we've been doing this for twenty nine years. We usually have about twenty churches or organizations participating. And I have, I have my, my whole database of who to contact and when they last did this and when they last did that. And a few years ago, I was talking to Father Randy over at, at Holy Name of Jesus, and I said, hey, you haven't, you haven't hosted yet. <laughs> and he gave me the look of, I see where this is going. And Father Randy has been amazing, as all the other hosts have been we, okay, we had one minister in Greenfield who always said he just put up the flag and see who saluted. And when you put up the flag of we're feeding the hungry, people salute. Yep. So Father Randy stepped up for this year. We're going to be touring South Deerfield. We'll probably be passing the studio. I'm not quite sure. He did give me the route. I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, it's always about five or six miles. And he came up with a route going through South Deerfield of four miles. And he was very concerned that he wasn't really that close to the six mile mark. And he emailed me his concerns. And I simply told him that it really doesn't matter how far we walk. What matters is why we walk. Some people walk four miles, some people walk two, some don't walk at all. If you go to a friend and say, I'm doing the crop walk. I'm not actually walking, but I'm going to be serving apples to the people who do walk. You know, people don't say no to feeding the hungry. We have different organizations that come up with their own creative ways of raising money. The 
South Athol Methodist Church a few years ago had boats and burgers, I think they called it. <laughs> you know, for they have a big river over there. That they well, you know, might there. as well use it. Uh, so <laughs> they gave, you know, you donated your $10 or whatever, and you got a hamburger, and they gave you a paddle, and off you go. Uh, a little plug for anyone who wants to play some low brass. On November 27th, uh, which is the Sunday right after Thanksgiving, we'll be having our 21st, I think, I have lost count, 21st Franklin County Tuba Christmas. Yep. And that's going to be at the United Church of Berniston. And there's no admission fee to the concert, but we have a free will offering. And whatever gets donated at the crop walk, oops, whatever gets donated at the Tuba Christmas, Tuba Christmas for the last couple of years has gone right into the crop walk. Here's a clip of Steve in action addressing the troops at the recent organizational meeting for the crop walk supporters. So October 16th at two o'clock is when we will be walking. At one o'clock, we will kind of be opening up the doors to let the throngs in and registering everybody. Um, I kind of jokingly said throngs, but really recruit. Um, my job is to tell you to recruit, and your job is to go recruit. Um, talk to your church congregations, tell them what's happening. This is the 30th time we've done this, and we still have people in our churches who don't know that we're doing this. If you have friends in other churches, tell them what's happening on the 16th of October. If you know people from different schools, tell them what's happening. It makes more paperwork for us, but we're happy to do it. Uh, we are feeding the hungry. Christ asks us, no he doesn't, he tells us to help him. And he says, please do this for me. So we are helping feed the world hungry. 75% uh, of what comes into the Franklin County Crop Hunger Walk goes around the world to feed hungry and do all sorts of things. I mean, buildings and education and all sorts of things. 25% <laughs> of it comes back to Franklin County. And the food bank, I think is, is the food bank just over the line? Yeah. Okay, yeah. comes back to the area. So 25% of it comes right back to the area. We have directions. Not how to find the church, you have to find the church yourself. But down on 15 Thera Street is the, is the church, and Father Randy has come up with the short walk and the long walk, and he was quite concerned. He, you know, it was an email, but I could kind of tell there was concern of, are these long enough? And what we have to stress to our, our congregations is it's not how far you walk, it's why you are walking that's important with this. Uh, I do have good news, especially if you're in Charlemont, hoping not to have snow and hills again. Um, we have two walks and they're both quite short. We have the long walk, which is going to be four miles and the short walk is going to be two miles. Yes, I saw all the pens start moving. Your congregations will be asking you that question. Not only are they relatively short, it's South Deerfield, so it's flat. So two miles and four miles of flatness. We're not talking North Orange, where you only go 20 feet while you've gone a mile up. Um, so you mentioned that there's a route, and this thing happens October 16th, right? Yes. And there's a, there's a route that you let Father Randy map out. Mm -hmm. So when you mentioned before, it was like a walkathon. A walkathon, you get pledges per mile, but in this case, it's not that, right? That's not how you're working it. Tell, explain how it works. When it, when it first started, it was a walkathon. I will give you $2 for every mile type right. of thing. Now it's just donate money and I'll go walk for you. Uh, so you give a $20 bill and you say, Chris Collins has given $20, done. I'm gonna go walk and you have to trust that I'm gonna do what I said I would do, which is I'm raising money for the hungry. So, you know, you're not gonna say no to that. <laughs> but you have to walk the whole six miles? Is that- Oh, no. Uh, no. Uh, it's just what you can do? Or? We, have, we have the four mile route, which is what most people end up doing. Uh, it becomes pretty much just a parade of, of noise and laughter. <laughs> well, when you have 200 people, it's, I, have, I have a buddy of mine from from the Methodist Church in Greenfield, we always hook up together and we talk about college hockey. 
it's like the only time we get to see each other. So we talk about how things are going at the alma mater because my alma mater has been doing really well lately. Which, uh, which is? UMass Lowell. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, frozen Four type of that's stuff. That's exactly uh, right. And it's just a bunch of noises, a bunch of happy people walking down the street raising money for Hungary. Well, that sounds like a, a real sort of a community building kind of a thing. And, and you know, I, I, I think about an event that would be similar. I think of the Relay for Life, for mm -hmm. example, where people get together and spend an entire day and night walking uh, to raise money for cancer. And uh, so it's like, you said about 200 people. If, if someone wants to get involved, how do they get involved? They call me. They email me. They Facebook me. We have the Franklin County Crop Hunger Walk Facebook page, which we've been trying to get more into 2016. It was started just a few years ago. And that's the best way to communicate. We put everything on Facebook. And once you, once you Facebook me to say that you have a desire to do this, there's no turning back. Uh, <laughs> I now have your name. He now has you. <laughs> he has you in his, in his site. It's and you in the database. <laughs> I would think it wouldn't be too hard to get people to come. I mean, obviously, you, you've been doing this for many, many years. This is the 30th anniversary. I, you know, people keep, seem to be coming back every year to do it. I wouldn't think it would be that hard to keep, uh, keep people involved. Oh, it's not. Uh, the same people come back year after year. Uh, the same people come back older and sometimes more decrepit than before, but you can't tell them not to participate. Right. You know, I walked six miles a few years ago and I, I've hurt myself and I can't walk as much, but I'm going to do this instead. With all the money going to the crop walk. Uh, a few years ago, Charlemont, we always joke about Charlemont. Charlemont had snow and sleet. Oh. October, this is October, oh. snow and sleet. You don't even want to joke about that, right? I mean, Actually, we have, last year we had <laughs> snow and I have video on the Facebook page of me standing on Federal Street in Greenfield going, yes, it's snowing. <laughs> uh, but Charlemont, I was up there and my son was just a little guy at the time. And we always have a prayer, you know, be safe. And everyone was leaving. And I looked out the window and I went, ugh. I'm keeping Isaac here. If you want to keep any of your little people here, I'll be more than happy to you know, because I'm, I'm the one who's always with the little kids. Right. So I stayed back and my money, my money was pledged for me to do something with the crop walk and I, I took care of the two and three year olds that day. Is it mostly churches that are involved or is it, are there other people, just individuals? Or? Uh, very much mostly churches, you know, being from church will service, that's kind of the yeah. the main clientele but there are people who aren't associated with churches and want to help out we're not going to say no if you're going to help we're going to if you're going to offer to help we're going to we're going to take it uh some schools we had north Mount herman last year this year they can't but they have given some little bit of inkling that we might have it up there oh uh, really in the future years we'll have to work around oh, parents beautiful. weekend and stuff yeah. oh it's always beautiful no matter where you are, we've been in some places, some locales which aren't beautiful, but when you have beautiful, happy people yeah. raising money, it's going to be a nice. What are some nice of the other afternoon. places you've had there? I mean, this is going to be through this year, it's to be through Deerfield, right? Through South Deerfield, Deerfield yeah, this primarily. year. Primarily. Okay, I'm not going to give you the whole list. <laughs> you don't have to be. Um, where are some let's of the see, ones just that are recently, most memorable? Yeah. Last year was at St. James Church in Greenfield, mm -hmm. and next year it's looking like we might be at the Second Congo Church in mm -hmm. Greenfield. Might as well use the same route. You just have to get across Main Street and do the same route. Right. Before that was Montague Center. We've had, we've had um, Shelburne Falls and Burniston many times. The United Church of Burniston is actually where the Franklin County Crop Hunger Walk started in 87. So Burniston a bunch of times. North Orange. Yeah. You know, I'm a green. See, I told you I was going to hit it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm a Greenfielder and I, I always have trouble remembering North Orange is part of Franklin yeah, County, but North Orange is part of Franklin County. They have a very active group and a few years ago we had the crop walk up there and no matter weather, we always have the crop walk except for North Orange because when the governor declares a state of emergency, yeah. we had some sort of microburst that went through North Orange that morning and David Neal was the the head of the crop hunger walk at that time and he finally went yeah no <laughs> so we did it the next week 
Well, it's also, you know, we having on the 16th of October, it's right in the middle of foliage. It's you perfect know, for it's, foliage. It's, it's, you know, it's not probably nice and crisp, but hopefully there's no natural disasters, mm -hmm. but certainly it's, I would think it's, it'd be a picturesque way, especially coming through this town, which is so nice in the fall. Right. Sunderland a few years ago, I mean, we're Franklin County, you really can't, I was born and bred, you are born and bred. You can't find an ugly place in Franklin That's County. Correct. If something's not beautiful, you go around the corner and you'll find the beauty there. Uh, Sunderland was absolutely gorgeous. I had my youth group, this was the First Baptist Church in Greenfield, I had the youth group walk that one probably a while ago. Yeah. And we had some sort of meeting that was happening after the crop walk and we almost turned it into a crop one run, but we didn't. Um, that was a good five, six miles, and yeah. I think we finished it in like an hour and 10 minutes or something. Wow. It's like, you know, it's like speed walking in the Olympics. You have to keep one foot on the ground at all times. Um, so we did it. We did the crop really fast walk. Do you ever have people do sort of fundraising challenges? I know that, like for example, with the, with the With It For Life, teams will challenge each other right. and can I raise more than you? Is there that kind of competition involved or is it? Um, <laughs> sort of, I, I've tried to do away with that. Uh, before, I, I guess this is my fourth year in as being the organizer. And before that, there is some challenges that were taking place, which I didn't really find to be all that healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at the numbers, the numbers were falling at the time too. So maybe it had something to do with it. Uh, when we have the crop walk, we have the organizations register. They come in and they put their name on a big right. piece of paper and they used to put a tally mark for everybody. And they go, oh, look, United Church Bernstein has 23 people. And look, they only got two. Oh, I see. So I, I went, that's not necessary. We, we're going as one group. So now we, we still have the paper, we put our our church or the organization's name up there, but we don't keep a tally of how many are there because we're Franklin County going as one. If someone wants to get involved and be part of this, how do they get a hold of you? What's your number and your information? Uh, the Facebook page is, is very easy. I'll give you my email and you can sure. put that on the screen. That's probably the easiest thing. The email would be Damon's, as in my last name mm -hmm. with a plural, underscore, the word of, the word on, uh, another underscore, Gill. Makes sense, doesn't it? It does. So Damon's of Gill with the underscores, and that's yahoo.com. Okay. And then, of course, you can go to the, the Facebook page, and you can just Google. I just Google 2016 Crop Walk Franklin County, and it brought you right Franklin to Franklin County, Mass. Franklin County, Mass. There are three other Franklin counties we didn't know That's, about. that's a good point. <laughs> so learn more about it, and... Uh, Get involved. It's going to be a great event. October 16th, 2016, FCATS cameras will be there to capture some of the flavor of what's going on. And uh, my guest has been Steve Damon, organizer of the 2016 Crop Walk for Franklin County. Learn more about it. Get involved. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. And I Thank hope it really much. works out. And hopefully there aren't any natural disasters on October 16th. 17th. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's seven. No, no. We'll, we'll, we'll save them till the 17th. The walk <laughs> is the 16th. Oh, that's right. Very good. Steve Davidson, my guest. That's South County Spotlight. Thanks for watching. And for all of us here at FCAT, have a good day.